Hi, I'm Matt with Schematical, and today I'm going to tell you about how I installed Nest.js on AWS Lambda using Terraform. And I will give you the scripts for free because they're already open sourced. Link in the show notes. Let's start with why I did it real quick. I recently joined a community called Small Bets, and I love my consulting practice. If you need help, feel free to check out schematical.com. I'm sorry that sign broke, but oh no, there's a light on. Forget about the light. It's gone. <laughs> Since last year, I streamlined my consulting business so much, I've got a little extra time on my hands right now. I tried, I decided to launch some extra SaaS's, software as a service products that could generate some side income. And I decided to build a bunch of them real fast and I needed to whip up their sales pages and I wanted a way where I could do that. I know you could use Square or something like that, but most of the time my signups are pretty custom for the SaaS. So I need to have a little extra control there. And I wanted it to be server-side rendering. So better SEO. So I jumped on Nest.js and I got to building. So one of the really cool things about the way I set things up today is that you can run Next.js serverless and you only get charged when traffic is actually coming into AWS there. You don't have an always on server. And that was pretty tricky. And I'll show you how I did it. But at least then you're only paying for it when people are using your SaaS, not just when you're sleeping and no one's using it. So. Unless people are using when you're sleeping, that's great. The first idea that I whipped up so far is IndieHustlers.com, and we'll use that kind of as my demo here, and I'll start to explain it as we go. But let's jump into the technical stuff, because that's typically why people come to my channel a lot of times. Actually, leave a comment. Why do you watch this? Did you come here to find out how to use Nest.js and Terraform and Lambda buzzwords? <laughs> or, or did you come here to see my smiling face? And don't feel like you have to say the second one. So this is my repo where I've stored most of my Terraform stuff and my infrastructure for almost everything is open source. Let's start off with the modules. We've got two new modules here, Next.js Lambda Base, and these are specifically optimized for my purposes. Feel free to change them however you like. So if we go in main here, we're just defining some basic information like what the Lambda ARN is likely to be so we can attach it to API Gateway. Here we set up some basics for API Gateway, a RESTful API that will take the traffic from the internet and then invoke the Lambda, which is really tricky because Nest doesn't support invoking, but I got it to run either way. I'll show you how that works in a bit. So this is a base method right here that takes anything and it proxies it to this resource. I did a separate video in my channel on how to use API Gateway. I actually have a whole API Gateway environment that's open source that you guys can use to set up. Here's your resource right there. Basically, this builds up this API gateway instance right here, and then these base routes that'll just proxy. And those routes, that's where that uh, Lambda ARN comes into play because we need to pass that along. And that will take the stage variable environment. So you've got stages here, multiple stages, dev and prod. And there, there's some stage variables like ENV, and that'll tell it which Lambda to go to. But the individual stages are actually booted up in the next part, so let's get back to that. And the other thing we need is Route 53, and here we boot up an ACM cert that matches the domain name we passed in, and that can be used to do HTTPS authentication to it, and that's pretty much the base. So then, the way this works is each of these projects typically have an environment, and actually, I started doing this for the split GPT thing, project, the A-B testing one, if you follow my stuff. But then I actually ended up using IndieHustlers.com because I already own that, so it's poorly named. As you can see, it's two projects in one. I'm going to fix that. I should have fixed that before the video, but I'm trying to stick to a schedule. We're doing it live. Insert a doing it live thing. You've got to do it. You've got your base, which sets up everything that's not specific to an environment, and then you can see in here I declare one for prod and one for dev right now. Don't really need a staging because I'm a one-man show. But let's take a look at the environment. So this is the split GPT specific environment. And you can see all it does is invoke the Next.js Lambda, which it grabs from my front end environment. So let's take a look at what's in there. First thing we'll see is that it does boot up an API gateway environment, which I've already written. So I do reuse my own Terraform modules. This is really nifty. And again, check out the video on that. It also boots up a CloudFront distribution and all sorts of fun stuff there from my CloudFront module. So feel free to check that out. 
And the rest of this stuff is just cores, policies, things like that. It boots up code build, so you can check out my build pipeline video. All this stuff is on the channel, so feel free to dig on in on all that. And it's all open sourced in here, so this builds your build pipeline, so you automatically have some CI CD. You don't have to manually deploy or anything like that. It's real nice, pulls it right out of GitHub. And here's where it boots up the Lambda. Now this is where we get tricky. So this is a standard Lambda service, which I've defined over here. It's another open source module. And the tricky thing here is that we're using this layer. Now I didn't write this layer. This Lambda adapter layer was written, I believe by AWS, and it allows you to take an invocation and pipe it into a specific port that the Lambda is running. So in this case, Next.js, doesn't know how to accept invocations. What it does is it accepts HTTP packets running on a port or get, getting sent in on a port. And then it processes it just like as if it was a regular web server, but lambdas aren't always on web servers, they're serverless invocations. So this takes an invocation from the API gateway and makes it so the lambda kicks on. And what's amazing about this is that you're not paying for a server to host your Next.js app all the time. You're only paying for it when people are using it. So this layer being here, that's why you see this odd handler, which is run.sh, which basically just tells that server to boot up when the Lambda warms up. And it can handle multiple invocations, so it's not like it runs this every single time you get an invocation, but if it spins down because it's cold and no one's using it, then next time it boots up, this will kick off and run with it. I also have the build spec for it here. We basically set some environment variables right there. This, the details of that aren't super important there, but down here you can see I build the next app and you want to build it as a standalone app, in which case it'll have a next standalone directory. And that's where it basically outputs a small standalone web server. And we zip that up and send it out. And then all the static stuff up here, you can see that we then take everything in the static bucket and push that into S3 where CloudFront wraps that basically and uses it as a CDN to very cost effectively deliver my static assets to people. So, and then down here, there's just your standard IAM stuff. I'm using DynamoDB, but my back end's using it. And this technically is my front end, so it doesn't need that. And this just down here tells you that the API gateway can invoke this Lambda, which is good. Variables are pretty simple. You know, give it a service name, a region, environment API gateway ID, which you feed in from the API gateway environment, base path mapping, hosted zone name, all that stuff. You just go ahead and pass into it ACM cert ID if you had a you know universal cert you wanted to use, etc, etc. So all this stuff pretty much works ubiquitously. And if you want to see it, that you know the actual code that is actually the infrastructure as code for my entire stack all this stuff here drawn by ai chaos pixel chaos crawler is the back end for this because i'm too lazy to build another one every single time i have an idea you know shipper get off the pot's not up but everything else schematical.com this is the real stuff i am going to migrate schematical.com to next.js eventually i think because ideally it'll be better for seo but i'll let you know once i'm done with running some of these experiments it was not as challenging as you think now let's talk about what I built with it. The first thing I built with it is IndieHustlers.com. A buddy of mine, Dominic, who you've seen on the channel before, Dominic and I are working on different projects, but we try and support each other. It's, it's kind of lonely being a solo entrepreneur sometimes. You, you come up with ideas and you're in a vacuum and you're like, I need feedback on them. So that's why I'm, I'm big on joining various online communities. And at the time before I found sp small bets, I didn't have one. So I started building IndieHustlers.com or came up with the idea of it. And I don't want to take away from communities like small bets, but we came up with the idea of doing daily standups where we just basically give each other some accountability. He tells me what he worked on yesterday, what he's working on today. And we, if we have a problem, we kind of bounce it off each other. And we figured, why not scale that? Why not, you know, invite a couple more people? And I, this is one of my ideas where I'm like, eh, it's, Probably not going to go to the moon, but it's been good practice for me to make sales copy, make a landing page that's somewhat compelling, uh, wire in A-B testing, which I can get into if you're interested and you want to know what I'm doing for A-B testing. I can tell you it's not with ChatGPT yet, at least not automated with ChatGPT. Whatever. This is IndieHustlers.com, a community of solo entrepreneurs. As you can see, Still working on this, I have to do a video on this or replace this with something more compelling than 
the stable diffusion version of my dog's face from Chaos Pixel. And uh, a lot of this stuff is still from the template. I'm going to fix this. We'll put me and Dom in there and whatnot. And here's a section of the benefits you get. Community, camaraderie, shoulder to cry on, accountability. Oh, I should mention that this up here is actually being A-B tested right now. And I plan to expand that to more of the page. How it works, you know, small groups, intermittent personal. Everybody gets a chance to share and receive feedback. Some of the, I'm not going to lie, some of this copy, chat GPT, because I am just garbage at writing copy. This I wrote, okay? Daily 20-minute meeting. Basically, you get one minute to tell you what you did yesterday, one minute what you're doing today, and 30 seconds to ask for anything else. And then afterwards, you can stay and chat or not. It's up to you. I think I can rework this a little bit better. I don't think it does so well in this kind of hidden area there. We are doing $0 a month for the first cohort. So um, I guess me and Dom are the first two. So after that, I guess we got six spots open. So if you're interested, click apply there. And you get access to Discord, Monday through Friday, Statup, and Catan. After that, we're looking at $15 a month, but we'll see uh, how this goes. I'll probably A-B test that price a little higher, maybe. I don't think I'm gonna go a lot lower than that. Uh, here's some FAQs. You know, what are the difference between the free and paid versions? I just explained that. Uh, what does the application pipeline look like? Honestly, it goes to me and Dom and we say, huh, does this person seem like they've got interesting stuff to share? Cool. Will they get value from hanging out with us? Sure, go for it. Uh, where do we meet? Discord, voice channel. 100% virtual and the meetings won't be recorded unless we explicitly say so because that would be weird. But we may, you know, if you want to try and promote something, we might start, uh, you know, one day a week recording stuff. So... We'll play it by ear. And then here, a little last call to action and my sign-up form right here. Just tell us about yourself, what can we help you with, and let's get to it. Pretty simple. What I learned from sales pages, you don't want like a lot of stuff pulling your attention away. I'm actually going to get rid of that, I think. I don't even know. Oh, God. Okay, we're back. So that's one of my kind of side projects right now. My small bets, if you will. And you can go access it at IndieHustlers.com. I'll have a link in the show notes. We'll put it on screen, Matt. So right now the plan is to launch a couple more sites like this. The next one will probably be my split GPT A-B testing software where you use ChatGPT to ger generate the variations of this because I'm going to use it to generate variations for A-B testing. If you're interested in following along my entrepreneurial journey, hit the subscribe button, comment, let me know what you're working on. Hashtag building in public, evidently a thing. I have been doing more live streams so if you're at all interested in my live streams check those out i've been doing it on twitch at, that's the only place where i'm not schematical it's schematical games i think someone else stole my name there if you need help getting the terraform scripts to run hop on the discord or go to schematical.com and sign up for my group coaching there i coach people on how to, to do this stuff i also do one-on-one -on -one consulting so if that would help you go ahead and check that out again on schematical.com i think that's all i got so thanks for watching and again, I'm Matt with Schematical. Have a great day. It's going to be a decent blooper reel on this one. Oh no, there's a light on. Forget about the light. It's gone. <laughs> Testing. Oh yeah. So I moved my screens around. So if it looks like I'm looking that way, it's because there's screens over that way. That way I don't crank my neck on this stuff. I don't even know if we need this. You know what? You don't need to see me. I'm out. Got my mouse on the wrong screen. <laughs> nope, that didn't work. There we go.